This is a Snapology Origami Sunrise Lamp, Night Light and Disco Ball powered by the Raspberry Pi Zero and Adafruit's NeoPixels. It's a fairly common problem for kids to wake up and not know what time it is and so these sleep trainer clocks are also fairly common. Stars during the night, then Mr. Sunshine appears at a set time. We were passed down two of these grow clocks, which sit next to star projectors in each room, and frankly I've never got on with them, I find them a bit ugly and they are forever being disconnected and often show the wrong time. I'd been curious for a while about Adafruit's vibrant NeoPixel LEDs and had wondered if they could be combined with a more aesthetically pleasing approach to our endless pursuit for lions beyond 5am. It was a comment on my Cardboard Planetarium video recommending Snapology Origami that sent me down a path to actually designing a lamp. After a quick Google of Snapology Origami, I found myself down yet another internet rabbit hole of discovery. Most sources point to Hein Strobel as the pioneer, and in his words, it's a simple and cheap method to make convex polyhedral models. Between his site and that of Dave Honda, I discovered some pretty mesmerizing designs and couldn't help wondering what patterns of light would be thrown from a light source in the center. Essentially, strips of paper are folded into polygons, then connected with further strips acting as connectors. No glue or other fixing methods required, just paper. Before long, I was the proud creator of a multicolored icosahedron, but it was with this model, apparently referred to as an icosidodecahedron, that I had a light bulb moment of the literal kind. With a little further Googling, I came across this design by Ed Chu. He'd used recycled Tetra Packs to create a spherical lamp for which he had won a design award some years ago. I was a little dubious about the authenticity of the light pattern shown, but thought it would be cool to create something along the same lines and find out if I could get similar results. And, as you will see, I needn't have doubted the light and shadows created by Ed Chu's model. I had read about and seen some interesting applications of Adafruit's NeoPixels and understood them to be plenty bright enough. They come in all shapes and sizes and can be chained together. This guide from the Pi Hut website shows them going up the stairs, but they can also be wired up individually or even sewn into garments with conductive thread, as shown here on Adafruit's channel. I couldn't wait to see how they'd look inside a paper lamp. So, I began saving Tetra Packs, but after realising that my wife would need to get through 400 litres of soya milk before I would have enough cartons, I lost patience, headed to Tesco's and bought a bunch of more coloured paper. I made a quick mock-up using equilateral folded triangles and while the throw of the light from my phone's LED gave a pleasing pattern, the channels around the pentagon pieces looked like chasms which would diminish the spherical look I was going for. I'd learnt from my experiments with geodesic domes that at the heart of a geometric sphere is an icosahedron, a 20-sided shape comprised of equilateral triangular faces, each vertex being the meeting point of five edges. To give the faces their curve, each triangle is broken into smaller triangles with edges of various lengths. The smaller the triangles, the more spherical the look. My geodesic prison, sun and earth, and my cardboard dome were all three frequency domes. That is, there were three points between each vertex. Ed Chu's Tetra Pak lamp was a massively complex six frequency sphere. For my lamp, I decided I would settle on a four frequency structure. While using equilateral triangles could create funky designs like this, I was really going for as spherical a look as possible. I used the same geodome calculator that I had used previously, which revealed that for a four frequency sphere, I would in theory need six different lengths for the edges of each of the inner triangles. But as that would be a nightmare to fold, I went for just two triangles. I Isosceles triangles for the vertices where pentagon pieces would form, which would have two smaller edges than equilateral triangles for everything else. According to the dome calculator, this would make a sphere with a diameter of 15 centimeters. To create these pieces, I folded my two centimeter paper strips around a piece of thin cardboard with a smaller and wider end. The triangular pieces fold around six times to give each triangle a double wall. Each triangle connects to the next with a connector strip equivalent to four faces in length. I was off to the races. Now I realise fans of Raspberry Pi and Adafruit might be feeling fatigued with all this talk of paper folding, so here is a quick drop of some imaginary Python origami code. 
I deliberately didn't work this out beforehand as I knew the numbers would be daunting, but well, each of the 20 faces was made up of 16 smaller triangles for a total of 320 triangles and over 600 connector pieces. The truth is, it was actually quite calming to assemble. I can recommend it if you are looking for a mindfulness type activity or you know, you're trying to give up smoking or whatever. I can even imagine a class full of kids folding away while listening to the teacher. Ah, the arguments though. Sir, Johnny won't give me back my partially completed rhombicuba octahedron. Well, it was a nice thing to do in front of the telly, watching old episodes of Friends. A bit like knitting, I imagine. I wonder if my mother-in-law totaled each stitch in Ollie's crocodile onesie or, ready for this, Blue Bunny's jumper. It really started to take shape and halfway through I was starting to get a sense of what it may look like with the Neo Pixels shining through. Or you know, what it'd be like if Oscar Cat were to take up fencing. With the sphere well on the way to completion it was time to unbox my exciting package from the Pi Hut, which you'll see is empty because like a normal person I opened it as soon as it arrived. I bought a Raspberry Pi Zero for £13, a plastic case for 3 and this NeoPixel ring for 7 The ring has 12 red, green and blue LEDs which can be individually programmed. I also bought an SD card with Noobs pre-installed and as I have not yet mastered the process of connecting a Raspberry Pi to the internet without a monitor, I set it up using our lounge TV. Before long, I was all connected and was able to log into it via SSH. While the Raspberry Pi had the headers pre-soldered, there was no escaping the need to get the soldering iron out to connect the Linear Pixel ring to the jumper leads, which thankfully I achieved without issue. I followed tutorials on the Pi Hut and Adafruit's websites to get the Pi up and running with CircuitPython, a version of Python designed for microcontrollers. Amazingly, this went without a hitch. Once completed, it was relatively easy to get my Hello World on, or should I say, get my Hello Green on. With 12 LEDs and 16 million colour combinations, the possibilities were endless and before long I had coded a few sequences and had managed to sit the NeoPixel ring in the base of the lamp. In a Python file, you just need to import board and NeoPixels, define a variable telling the Pi which pin you've connected to, the number of pixels you have and the brightness level. Then you could either fill all the LEDs with the colour like this, with a value of up to 255 for red, green and blue, so shown here is full green. Or specify one LED only, like this. It was really satisfying to see the lights come on. I'd been a bit worried that I might need a second power source beyond the 5 volts that the Pi's pins put out. But with just 12 NeoPixels, this wasn't a problem. With previous Pi projects, I coded directly on the Pi with a monitor plugged in. However, having a monitor next to the lamp on a shelf would have killed the look I was going for, so I quickly began editing the code using the Juice SSH Android app on my phone. But as you can imagine, this soon proved a bit piddly and problematic. As part of the setup process, I had run several wget commands, and so I thought, wait a minute, perhaps I could just edit and host the Python files on my own website and wget them over to the Pi. So that's what I ended up doing, using the Code Tasty Web IDE on my Chromebook. My first program is probably not suitable for a morning wake-up light. Well, unless waking up with vertigo is the goal. This code loops through some colours and full brightness. The only way to get the distinct triangle pattern was with a single LED light so this one fades one LED in at a time with various colours. And this code was taken from Adafruit's example and shows a rainbow effect. I then had two programs to substitute for the grow clock's morning and nighttime effects. A drifting off program which slowly dims from full blue and then remains at a low level as a nightlight. And here is Mr. Sunshine who slowly warms up to full brightness at a scheduled time in the morning. 
To get these programs to run remotely, I first considered whether I could have the Pi broadcast its own Wi-Fi network for a device to join and then somehow control the lamp. This was how my Raspberry Pi rent worked a few years ago, but that came pre-configured. In the end, I wrote a program selector Python script which checks a JSON file on my site to see if the program status has changed. A super simple web form sets the program by passing its name to the JSON file through a URL and a PHP script. Finally, I used the crontab file on the Pi to schedule the program selector script to run once a minute, which felt a bit strange if I'm honest. I know it's just a computer, but it seemed odd to think about a lamp checking my site over a thousand times a day. Would my web server get irritated? Do you want the light on? 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 Would my web server do whatever the web server equivalent of shouting shut up is? Perhaps I could start serving the lamp some adverts for filament enlargement kits, say. As well as being a bit of fun, the lamp has worked a treat as a morning sunrise light. The message is clear. If it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. Wait a minute, that's not it. Well, if it's night, it will be blue, so stay in bed. Yellow means get up, and as it fades in, it's a gentle wake-up call without any retinas being fried. I'm definitely going to be playing around with NeoPixels in the future. I'd love to put them in a quilt. Hey, maybe a quilt alarm clock or light up quilted fraction wall for the classroom. A Snapology moon with phases perhaps, or a beacon that lights up every time the International Space Station passes over. Or there's a tweet by Elon Musk, or when the vehicle behind gets too close, or the GameStop price is falling.